Good morning, it's Dr. James. Hey, I hope you're off to a beautiful start today. It's great to see you. Thank you for your time and thank you for your energy in this. Just, just getting up. Look at this sun. Uh, take you out here and just see the sun coming in over the mountains. It's very early today. And uh, I woke up this morning and I was reminded of one of the most sacred moments of my life. And it happened about 30 years ago. And I know you're going to love this if you're interested. Actually, scratch that. Not interested. Committed. Fully committed to having an exceptional life. Something that gives you this, this space in your heart. <laughs> Just creates more space in your heart for love. And I am such a big fan of this time of the year. I feel like everyone's doing their very best to circulate love. But also, this time of the year is interesting because there's a great dichotomy. There's a, there's a whole lot of love being poured out and there's a whole lot of sadness. The holiday season brings up a lot for people emotionally. So here's something I want to share with you based on the experience that I had in a sacred window in my life 30 years ago in the Himalayas in Nepal. And I was questioning how it is that I could go back to the United States and really live up to what I wanted to be in my life. Have you ever felt that way? Like, gosh, you know what? I, I have a vision for my life. I have a feeling in my heart of how I would love to live, how I want my life to be outpictured, how I want to be a beneficial presence on the planet, and how I want the way that I am to affect everyone in a loving, kind, and generous way. Now, I know that sounds lofty, but is there any other thing that we should be doing in our life other than bringing love into the world? And this is a really important time right now because a lot of people are looking outside of themselves and you can be that presence for them. And here's the thing I learned. And I learned it from a meditation teacher when I was spending time in contemplation in Kathmandu. And he shared this word with me. It's a Nepalese word. It's called sada, S-A-D-D-H-A, -D -D sada. And it simply means that throughout the day, you have opportunities to do a sauna practice. And my meditation teacher, he said, you know what? You can do this a thousand times a day. As many people as you lay eyes on, you can do this practice. And the practice is very simple. Sada simply means to place your love upon them. To place your love upon them. Just take that in. Every human being that you lay eyes on today, practice sada. Every time you walk into a new room, think to yourself, sada, I'm going to place my love upon this person. I'm going to place my love upon this person. And you literally, you literally, look at the sun coming in right now. Perfect timing. You can be the sun in someone's life. That's not corny. What, what other things should we be doing today? What other joy should we be bringing into our life today? Bringing the love of life into someone's life today is the highest thing we could be doing. It's our job description. It's our divine opportunity. It's why we are here. Sada, sada, sada. I'm placing my love upon you. I'm placing my love in the grocery store, at the gas station, in your workspace, with your lover, with your partner, with your kids, with strangers. And you can do it with soft eyes. Just soft, beautiful eyes. Just a beautiful overtone and a smile. Sada. And here's what's happening under the influence of Sada. You are lowering inflammation. There's a beautiful study that talks about this space called positivity resonance, which means the micro moments of love and how they actually increase our level of oxytocin, how they lower our levels of stress, not just for you, but for everyone that you lay your love upon. Let's pollinate with abandon today. Sada. Sada. Much love. Many blessings. Have a beautiful day. Bye for now.